Having a public relationship on YouTube can really be a challenge. It's hard to balance personal life and entertainment, and if those relationships end, it's even more difficult because you know you have an audience wanting to see you together. So today, guys, we're gonna take a look at five YouTubers that are in or were in a toxic relationship. And guys, let's see if we can hit 500 likes on this video. Make sure you hit that like button, or your toilet will always be clogged. All right, I know half of you guys are watching this on the toilet as we speak. You don't want that to happen, so you might as well hit the like button. And real quick, I just want to let you guys know that down in the comments we pin an amazon gift card on every single video all you gotta do is make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you're new and turn those notifications on that we have a really good shot of being one of the first people to the video to get that amazon gift card you have to be subscribed with notifications on in order to win so make sure you guys do that but anyways let's go ahead and get into this video sniper wolf and sausage now sniper wolf and sausage are still currently in a relationship and a lot of this stuff is going to be based on rumors from what we learned from face sensor during some recent drama that went down so if you guys don't know i'll try to give a quick backstory story on some drama that went down basically sniper wolf was live streaming and she made some pretty mean comments about Alyssa violet and summer ray and phase banks is dating Alyssa violet so phase banks went onto twitter called out sniper wolf on twitter tweeted a bunch of stuff but one of the main tweets was that she basically tried to get with phase censor and she completely denied all the accusations phase censor ended up getting involved sniper wolf ended up saying some pretty mean things to phase censor and about phase censor's girlfriend yannette garcia so phase censor ended up uploading some videos kind of exposing sniper wolf or really just talking about some of the stuff that he knows he showed a lot of text messages and in these text messages it showed that sniper wolf did kind of flirt with face sensor at one point she sent him a message saying hi you're cute but also in these messages she admitted that she's in an abusive relationship with her current boyfriend sausage these messages were a couple of years old she's been with sausage for a really long time and the thing about these messages is that sniper wolf and sausage are both claiming they're fake face sensor went well out of his way to try to do everything that he can to prove that they're real he took his computer to the verizon store had verizon and pull the messages up from his iCloud backup. So it really comes down to who you believe in the situation, if you believe the messages are real or not. You can either believe Sniper Wolf or Face Sensor. You know, I'm not saying who to believe in, that's up for you guys to decide. But if these messages are real, Sniper Wolf admits that she's in an abusive relationship with Sausage. Face Sensor said he ended up, you know, calling her on the phone and talking to her about it. And, you know, he didn't really get into any detail. We don't know the specifics behind this, but it does look like there could be something going on with Sniper Wolf and Sausage. Like I said, these are kind of rumors because we don't know who's telling the truth here it comes down to who you guys want to believe we have to kind of wait and see if anything comes from this but if you guys are familiar with the story let me know down in the comments who you believe in this situation like i said i'm not going to tell you who to believe i don't know who to believe i'm just telling you guys what face sensor has said and what he's shown with these text messages and like i said snipe wolf claim they're fake matthew santoro and nicole arbor now this was a massive breakup and it was a big story a few years ago when matthew santoro and nicole arbor broke up and there was a lot of drama that went down behind this because matthew santoro uploaded a video talking about their relationship and he said that he was physically and emotionally abused by Nicole Arbor. I mean, he had a video where he was breaking down and crying. It was really big news. I'm going to try to break down exactly, you know, what happened in this relationship, according to Matthew Santoro. So Matthew Santoro said, you know, for the emotional parts and basically how the relationship was going at the time, according to Matthew, Nicole Arbor forced him to push everyone out of his life. He said he pushed his family away. He pushed his closest friends away. He deleted tons of people off of social media. He deleted every number out of his phone. He wasn't allowed to have any female friends friends she always thought that he was cheating if he was talking to a girl and he said that she would kind of manipulate him by saying if people didn't agree with what she was saying or what she was telling him to do she would say that they're losers don't listen to them they're just losers and he said one night he was having a panic attack because he was always walking on eggshells around her being with her and they ended up getting into an argument and that ended up causing them to break up that night but after the argument she refused to let him leave she told him that he isn't going anywhere and she actually hit him in the face he said he did end up leaving that night, but about a month later, she contacted him saying that she changed, she was sorry, she would never, you know, abuse him physically or anything like that ever again, and they ended up getting back together. But he said, you know, once they got back together for the second time, everything became psychological and it hurt him personally, and it also hurt his business here on YouTube. He said he was only uploading, you know, once every three weeks, he was really stressed out, he was depressed about it, it was just a really big kind of, you know, a mess. He said that he did eventually end up breaking up with her because he wanted his life back. He told her that he broke up with her because he wanted to focus on business but he said in reality all he wanted was for him to have his life back and to just move on past this relationship. Alyssa Violet and Jake Paul now this is another couple that had a pretty massive breakup earlier this year and all the drama has carried on throughout this entire year. So we can kind of start from the beginning just in case you guys aren't familiar with this, but it is a pretty big and notable breakup this year. So I'm not going to go super in depth on this. Basically at the time, this was in February when they had their breakup. Alyssa Viola went on to Snapchat and she was claiming that Jake Paul was kicking her out of the Team 10 
house. She was claiming that Jake Paul, you know, took the locks off of her doors, threw all of her stuff down the stairs, and is just kicking her out. Jake, on the other hand, claimed that, you know, he had been telling her to move out for a while, he didn't want her to live there anymore, and she just pretty much refused to move out or was taking too long. So he decided to, you know, take it upon himself, move all of her stuff down the stairs, and pretty much force her to move out. And like I said, this drama has carried on throughout this year because things have just continued to build up, especially after Jake Paul released It's Every Day Bro, where he threw some shots at Alyssa Violet on the song saying that she was still texting him, he has all the messages, he has all the recordings. Tessa Brooks threw some shots at her saying, Panera is your home, so stop calling my phone. You know, there was tons of shots thrown at Alyssa Violet throughout this song, and that kind of reignited the beef or whatever, the drama, and that's when Alyssa Violet and Rice come into the making It's Every Night Sis, you know, a response to that and a diss track on Jake Paul. And then Alyssa Violet at that point ended up uploading a video where she explained everything that happened in their relationship. But we got even more information recently because of the whole situation between FaZe Banks and Jake Paul's assistant Meg, where Jake Paul uploaded the video with his assistant Meg, and in the video, they accused FaZe Banks of assaulting Meg. And when FaZe Banks responded to their accusations, Alyssa Violet came on and she talked quite a bit about her relationship with Jake Paul and said that he was really abusive to her. There was times that he pushed her into a bush, causing her whole arm to bleed because she like fell into thorns. There was times that he would spit on her when he's angry. There was another time he dragged her down the stairs, leaving a pretty much permanent bruise on her knee. She said it's been there for like two years. And of course, Jake Paul uploaded the video as well denying all these accusations and it just comes down to who you believe in the situation similar with pretty much everything on this list it all comes down to who you believe in you know the different situations here but it was definitely a pretty toxic relationship regardless of you know if the whole abuse thing is true or not i'll leave that up for you guys to decide if you believe that just having her stuff thrown down the stairs and things like that definitely shows that there was some toxicity in the relationship and it just definitely wasn't healthy for them but now Alyssa violet and phase banks are in a relationship they seem to be really happy together jesse and gina so Jesse and Gina were a part of the boyfriend versus girlfriend prank channel, daily vlogging channel. They were together for 10 years, but of course they had a pretty big breakup. This was a big story. And their relationship wasn't as toxic as some of the other ones on this list. It doesn't seem like there was any like abuse accusations or anything like that. The way Jesse explains it, he says that, you know, being a daily vlogger kind of causes you to go a little bit crazy. You have people telling you what to do every single day. They're commenting and telling you what they want you to do in the vlogs. And as a daily vlogger, you're trying to come up with ideas. So you use those ideas and you pretty much end up, you know, not living your own life and living a life for them. And he said that it can screw you up mentally. He also said that he feels like he sold his relationship to the internet, although he also says they're still really good friends. And Gina said they had a really good relationship, but they actually broke up before they ever announced it. They were in the process of filming a show for YouTube called Prank Academy, and they actually broke up during that time, but continued to daily vlog because they didn't want to, you know, hurt the show or, you know, to put out a show because they didn't want to put out a show of them together if they were broken up. It would just look weird and, you know, they wanted to make sure the viewers were entertained and didn't want to you know hurt the show in that way and Gina said the turning point in their relationship was when Jesse's mom passed it kind of pushed him to this place where he wanted to push everyone away and kind of push everything away she also said that they felt like they had an obligation to keep everything positive so they never really showed any of their problems on camera because they felt like you know people were coming to them to escape their own reality they didn't want to put anything negative on camera so she felt like they had an obligation to keep everything positive and because of this things got really stressful behind the scenes and you know it caused fights and things like that she also says she's not angry at him and she doesn't hate him. It's just one of those things where, you know, they decided they needed to go their separate ways. And it's pretty crazy being in a relationship for 10 years. But at the end of the day, it seems like they're both happy and, you know, they just want each other to do well in life. Phase Adapt and Adriana. So this was another pretty big breakup here on YouTube. Phase Adapt is, of course, you know, a member in Phase. He's a gamer. And he had a pretty public relationship with his girlfriend, Adriana. She was featured in a lot of different videos. She was at the Phase house sometimes. So, I mean, YouTube definitely knew about her. They actually dated for two years and she ended up breaking up with phase adapt because she wanted to go to college and do her own thing you know she was planning on going to college she didn't want to have to worry about being in a relationship i guess you know she wanted to just be single in college but a little bit after they broke up they ended up going out and getting lunch together and you know they wanted to talk and just see how things were they ended up you know hanging out that whole night and decided to get back together that night but as they were back together adriana ended up cheating on phase adapt he was hanging out with a friend and uh, one of his friend's friends called him and told adapt that adriana was cheating on him adapt already had plans to see her later that night so he texted her and he said he was coming 
over to see her and he basically wanted to confront her about this so he said that she got in his car he confronted her about this she tried to lie about it at first but he told her all the details that he knew she kind of knew she was caught and she eventually admitted to doing it and that's pretty much where it ended but at the end of the day i'm sure he's happier now to just move on and not be in a relationship where he has to worry about things like that happening all right well there you go guys those are five youtubers that are either in a toxic relationship or were in a toxic relationship and if you guys enjoyed the video please make sure you hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you're new and turn those notifications on this is extract up we'll catch you guys later peace out